When should you start fertilizing seedlings? And how much fertilizer should you use? Those are the topics I'm going to discuss in this program. And I'm also going to discuss the results of a test I did to see the difference between fertilizing earlier and later. So what is the common advice that you see online? Well, a lot of people say seedlings don't need to be fertilized. Wait until they're growing really well and then start fertilizing. That's really bad advice. Other people say, well, they're seedlings, they're small, so don't feed them so much. Only give them one quarter or one eighth teaspoon what you normally would. Again, that advice is wrong. First of all, we don't feed plants. What we do is we put nutrients in the soil so the plant can absorb what it needs. It's not like feeding a baby where you can overfeed the baby. Think about this. A seed drops in nature right beside the mother plant. What happens? Well, over time, the seedling germinates and grows, and it will grow just as well as the mother plant. Now, did that seedling get less nutrients than the mother plant? Well, of course not. They're growing in the same soil. They're getting the same nutrients. There's no difference between fertilizing a seedling and an adult plant. Another piece of advice I see is don't fertilize until that first true leaf is fully grown. Now, that advice isn't quite so bad, but even that isn't quite correct. Let's try and understand what really happens when a seed germinates and starts to grow. In this pot, I have some pepper seedlings. They sprouted about a week ago, and they have two leaves here. Now, these are what we call cotyledon leaves. They're not true leaves yet. The cotyledon leaves are produced from the food that's stored inside the seed. So when the seed germinates, it makes a root and it makes a shoot, and the shoot forms these cotyledon leaves. Now I'm waiting for it to grow a little more to make true leaves. This is a seedling of a castor bean. Now it germinated about two weeks ago, and these large leaves here are the cotyledon leaves, right? They came from inside the seed. And you can see that the first true leaves are starting to form. There's no food left in that seed. It's all used up for these cotyledon leaves. So now the plant has to go out and find nutrients to grow these true leaves. This is a critical point in the growth of a seedling. And it's at this stage that the plant has to go out and find nutrients in the soil. All right, so now we understand a little bit about the biology of this seedling. Let's go ask the experts. And quite honestly, the experts are the commercial growers. If they don't grow seedlings properly, they don't make any money. And commercial growers follow the advice from the scientific research. And there's been a fair amount of research in how to grow nursery stock. So what do they do? Well, if we look at the growth of a seed, we can break it down into several steps. So step one is the germination process. And while the seed's germinating, it really doesn't need nutrients because it gets all the nutrients it needs from that seed. And commercial operations don't usually feed at that stage. Step two is when the cotyledons are opening. Now, they usually fertilize somewhere between 25 and 50 parts per million nitrogen. Step three is when the first true leaf starts to form. And at that point, commercial operations increase the amount somewhere between 50 and 100 ppm nitrogen. And step four happens after the formation of those first true leaves. And at that point, they're fertilizing at more than 100 ppm. All right, so that's the data, but let's have a look at some real plants and see what happens. So I set up a little experiment where I grew some lettuce, and I grew it two different ways. One is without fertilizer, and one is with fertilizer. Here are the details of the experiment. So let me explain in more detail what my two watering systems were. In my control, I just used rainwater. So that rainwater does have some nutrients in it. As rain falls through the sky, it does pick up some nitrogen, picks up some sulfur, and maybe a few other elements. Then it hits the roof, and there it encounters plant debris, bird poop, squirrel poop, whatever it happens to be on your shingles. And that gets washed into the rain barrel. So there are some nutrients in there, but they're pretty low. 
The other solution I used was a master blend fertilizer that's designed for hydroponic systems. It's a complete fertilizer with micronutrients and uh, all of the NPK that you need, as well as magnesium and calcium. I made up that fertilizer using the same rainwater that I used for my control. And for that reason, I needed to add the calcium and magnesium. So how did these two plants do? Well, here they are. This is the one that received just rainwater. And this one is the one that received fertilizer. And the fertilizer was added as soon as the seedling started to grow, probably in the cotyledon stage. It probably got its first watering as it was forming cotyledon leaves. You can see the difference here. They're both healthy plants. They both have nice coloration. A lot of that red coloration is due to the higher light that I give them. But clearly this is the one that did best. And this is the one that received fertilizer right in the seedling stage. And the concentration of that fertilizer is identical to what I would use on a larger mature plant. So how much fertilizer does a plant like this need? Well, I suggest that you forget the label on the container. Start fertilizing based on the amount of nitrogen you're giving. Pick a fertilizer with the right MPK ratio. And for house plants, that would be something like a 3-1-2 ratio. So now you have the right ratio of nutrients. The next step is to decide on how much to fertilize. What you should do is fertilize based on the amount of nitrogen you're putting in. And you want to be somewhere around 100 ppm nitrogen. ppm is parts per million. And I know that's a unit that gardeners aren't familiar with. But I think it's really important you start becoming familiar with it. It's what all the scientists use. It's what all the commercial nurseries use. So why don't gardeners use it? Why do we insist on using teaspoons per gallon? So the problem you have is, so what is 100 ppm and how do I measure that? Well, I've done the calculation for you. And it's fairly easy to make up a 100 ppm solution. On average, if we're looking at soluble fertilizer, one teaspoon is about five gram. And I'm basing the numbers on that amount. So if you have a fertilizer that's a 10% nitrogen, that's that first number in the MPK, 10. Well, if you take one teaspoon of a 10% nitrogen per gallon, you end up with 132 ppm. Now that's close enough to 100 ppm. You don't have to be that accurate. So one teaspoon per gallon of a 10% nitrogen will give you 132 ppm. Well, let's say your fertilizer is 20%. Well, that's twice as concentrated. So you would use half as much. A half a teaspoon of a 20% per gallon will also give you 132 ppm. If your fertilizer is a 30%, well, that's three times as concentrated. So you use one third teaspoon per gallon. And if your fertilizer is a 5%, like many of the organic fertilizers, well then that's half as much as a 10%, so you have to use twice as much. Two teaspoons of a 5% nitrogen will also give you the 132 ppm, provided you put it in a gallon of water. So it's actually quite simple to figure out the 100 ppm value. If you use that recipe instead of what you read online or what the bottle says, you're going to grow better plants. I have a couple other videos for you. If you want to know what the best MPK is, have a look over here. And if you think you should use a balanced fertilizer, which actually a lot of people recommend, that's wrong. That's bad advice. And this video will tell you why. Never use a 10-10-10. Happy gardening.